Twenty years later, in 1993, an American doctor, George Carlo, was charged with the responsibility of determining the health risk of cell phones. He directed a seven-year program of pivotal research into mobile phone use funded by the cell phone industry. But they didn't like his findings, that the science was unclear, but that the risk seemed significant. George Carlo is now one of the world's most credible cell phone sceptics, and he says because we don't yet know the health risks, we must exercise caution. It is, it is very similar to the problem we had with the tobacco industry, but the, the, the difference here is that in the United States we have now 208 million people using cell phones. Around the world, I think at last count, there are 1.9 billion people using cell, cellular or mobile phones. So that we have never had, ever in history before, penetration of a consumer product like this. And because of the litigation ongoing here in the United States, the cell phone industry knows that they uh, will lose a couple of these lawsuits, and when they do, they're probably going to turn to the government for some type of bailout. So that the institutional arrogance that they are exhibiting is, is born of the fact that so many people use cell phones, so much of retirement investment funds that are in place are uh, tied to telecommunication stocks, they feel that they're almost untouchable. So at the end of the day, they feel that they're going to have a government bailout here in the United States that will probably follow them around the world. Okay, you talked about the roughly 2 billion people using cell phones, and this is rapidly increasing. New territory, Sierra Leone, for example, and new demographics in old territories, children, for example. In the states where you're based, Disney and a company called Sprint are actively targeting children. How do you see that? Well, this is really grotesque. Um, we have companies like the Disney Corporation, which built its reputation on uh, being friendly to children, who have partnered with Sprint here in the United States. And in this partnership, Disney is not only selling phones, but they're also a carrier of signals so that people who have the Disney phones would actually pay the Disney Corporation for the minutes. And uh, what, what is most grotesque about this is that they are targeting children between the ages of 8 and 12 years old. They actually have named them the tweener market. So that we, we have not only this very uh, gross marketing tactic aimed at children, but we also have the problem that the scientific studies, the epidemiological studies that have been done thus far are really studies of adults who have used the phone for 500 to 1,000 minutes a month, maybe over a period of 10 to 12 years. And those studies are showing us doubling and tripling in the risk of brain cancer and eye cancer. When you start talking about a child eight or nine years old beginning use, by the time they're 19 or 20 years old, they will have used the phone for 10 years, and we have no idea what type of risk that's carrying. The projections that we do have indicate that we are putting these children in unbelievable danger. I want to go back to the adults. You talked about those studies that show 500 to 1,000 minutes a month. That's about 15 to 30 minutes a day. That there is risk there, but it's low risk. What have the studies told us about heavy users, more than 30 minutes a day or 1,000 minutes a month? Well, the, the studies that have, been, that have been published so far are studies that have been done in the middle 90s to the early, early 2000s. So back then, there wasn't such widespread use of cell phones. And you're right, that is not a lot of time on the cell phone. We did a study here in Buffalo, New York, where we looked at teenagers and their cell phone use patterns. The average teenager in Buffalo uses his cell phone 2,600 minutes a month. And the behavior patterns are very different. Many of these children leave their phones on at night and put them under their pillow so that they can receive text messages from their classmates during the night. And this is the kind of thing that is unprecedented, and we have no idea how to estimate how big the risk really is with this type of usage. Okay, let's leave heavy usage and uh, hypothesis, estimation and projection, and let's look at what the science actually tells us is happening to moderate users, say 15 to 30 minutes a day, pretty typical. What's science telling those people now? We have, we have conducted uh, or, or constructed epidemic curve projections and based on the epidemiological studies that have been published to date. And what they tell us is that today, 
there are between 30,000 and 50,000 new cases of brain and eye cancer attributable to cell phone use. By the year 2010, the projections say that number is going to be near 500,000 cases of brain and eye cancer every year attributable just to cell phone use. Those numbers are unprecedented. It's true that they're driven by the fact that in the world there are 1.9 billion people using cell phones, but we have never had this type of impending risk facing society. It is unprecedented, and I fear unprecedented in terms of the danger that it presents.